843, let's get some legal advice from uh, John Heyman from the Heyman Law Firm. He's here with me this morning. And the question today, a different one, coming in from Linda L., who wrote in to say, I had breast augmentation surgery last year. In the last six months, they've become so lopsided that I'm not comfortable leaving the house, and I feel strongly that the doctor has been negligent. Please let me know what I can do. What can you do? Well, I'm sorry to hear about that, Linda. And uh, I do have some answers for you. But uh, first and foremost, you, have, you must understand that the burden of proof is entirely different in medical malpractice claims as opposed to your typical auto accident or negligence claim. In, ne in a negligence claim, you have to establish that by a preponderance of the evidence that the other party is at, more at fault than you. However, in a, uh, in a medical malpractice claim, you have to establish by a, a preponderance of the evidence that the doctor in question uh, failed to follow customary medical procedure and that this poor result was due to the fact that the doctor in question failed to follow customary medical procedure. How do you determine that? Well, actually, it can only be determined by getting an expert opinion uh, from another doctor in the exact same field. So we'd have to go to a plastic surgeon to examine the patient and say, this would not have occurred, but for the fact that the doctor failed to follow customary medical procedure. Now, bear in mind, uh, we get hundreds and hundreds of calls over the course of a year on potential medical malpractice claims. And rarely, if ever, do are we in a position to find appropriate doctors to support these claims. Uh, why is that? Because uh, it's hard to de determine uh, that the doctor failed to uh, deviate from customary medical procedure, especially in elective surgery. Now, my experience with elective surgery is, uh, quite frankly, that, uh, you know, number one, there's an inherent risk of something like this happening. Number two, uh, quite frankly, uh, my experience is that juries uh, tend to disregard claims on behalf of people who uh, opt for elective surgery. They don't seem to have too much empathy. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to uh, offend you or hurt your feelings by telling you that. What I am saying is that our experience is that these cases, uh, if we uh, pursue them, we, we resolve them prior to going to trial, uh, have had poor success with juries on these cases. Um, elective surgery is uh, rather interesting, and medical malpractice is a fascinating field. It's one of those fields where uh, it, once you get involved, you know you're going to go at the very least to the courthouse steps. You're going to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, on experts, and uh, you're going to spend countless hours on these cases. And uh, so you better have a pretty good claim uh, in order to pursue it. So, again, we'd have to examine your photos. We would have to examine the, uh, the, rec uh, the records, right. the operating room records, and all the other records from the doctor. We'd have another doctor examine okay. those records as well. All right. So I wish you the very best, and thank you for asking. And I'm sorry we couldn't give you better news, Linda, but thank you so much uh, for your honesty. Attorney Heyman, always good to see you. And as always, 1-800-HEYMAN or HeymanLaw.com is where you can go if you would like to ask the attorney your legal questions. All right, right on.